Let me ask you something. What's the most terrifying thing in the world? Well, if you asked me, I wouldn't have to think too long to figure out the answer. At first, I might respond with the ocean, which is a definite contender, but there's something even more terrifying than that. The depths of the ocean. You know, where everything's super dark and the fish look like big scary monsters. Either that or they're ginormous. But while the thought of the deep sea does absolutely terrify me, I'm also oddly fascinated by it. I guess I'm just drawn to things that frighten me, laughing in the face of survival instincts. So of course, I may or may not be drawn to games that take place underwater. Though often when I play them, something like this happens. Ugh. I think the scare factor has to do with how the darkness gives way to the unknown. You never know what scary beasts are gonna pop out, or where they're gonna pop out from. Couple that with the fact that humans aren't meant to survive underwater, and you've got a real scary scenario. So when I found out I needed to review a Spongebob game that took place in the deep sea, I didn't feel so well. Ah, that's better. So what was that game again? Ah! Wow, this well is a lot bigger than I expected. I imagine I'll be falling for some time. Now this really reminds me of a certain Spongebob game. Guess I'll review it before I hit the bottom. Here's The Dark Abyss. Now The Dark Abyss was a notoriously creepy and somewhat difficult Spongebob game made by Working Man on Nick.com. It could basically be seen as bikini bottom or bust, but on opposite day. Instead of going up, you're going down. Way down, as a matter of fact. Down into the deep, dark abyss. Perhaps even the Abyssal Plain. I wonder if we'll have to find someone's stolen pearls this time. But this game knew it would scare people. So much so that it leaned heavily into the creepy factor. Now, Spongebob was no stranger to creepy games. It had its share of really spooky ones. Such as Zombie Pond, a game where zombies are climbing onto your boat from the ocean. You have to throw stuff down at them to keep them away. And side note, the music was way too awesome in this. <laughs> But there's yet another aspect that makes the Dark Abyss so interesting. As of today, it supposedly remains unbeaten. That's right, nobody on the internet has taken credit for finishing the game, or provided images for what the ending might look like. Many have tried, but none have succeeded. And don't count on me being the first, we all know how much I suck at games. But as soon as you start this game, the menu screen gives you a little taste of what you're in for. Yeah, I'm royally unsettled. At the start, we can choose one of four characters. Each of them have different stats. Sandy has the best agility and okay speed, but not a lot of health. Patrick has a lot of health, but terrible speed and agility. SpongeBob has everything in the mid-range, while Plankton has perfect speed, mid-range agility, and terrible health. Then when we start, we're falling into a place called the Not-So-Dark Abyss. Not sure why the SpongeBob characters are making this plunge, but hey, who am I to question them? You have to avoid the walls and enemies while collecting tokens that keep your light going. If your light goes out, you're left alone in the dark. This catchy music plays the entire time. <laughs> You also have power-ups that give each character a certain benefit. Sandy has rocket boots that let her fall slower, Patrick becomes invincible, Spongebob can push enemies away, and Plankton can go through obstacles while being invisible. You can also grab life preservers throughout the stage to activate these power-ups. Though as can be expected, the not-so-dark abyss isn't too bad, but it gets harder as you go. On your way down, you have to avoid jellyfish until you reach a hole that sucks you in. <laughs> Okay, it happens to be the world's hardest hole to get sucked into. You have to fidget around a bit, but you eventually make it in. This brings you to the next stage, the Getting Darker Abyss. Now the jellyfish are red. It's also a little darker, but it's nothing compared to the pretty dark abyss. Now things are really starting to get creepy. The spaces you have to squeeze through get even tighter too. We also have to deal with kelp that might tangle us up. This is where the game starts to get a lot more difficult. You might die here before you even make it to the dark abyss. But look at how ominous the game over screen is. Ah! 
That really is unsettling. <laughs> Wait, I took damage from hitting the hole? Yeah, if you hit the hole too hard, it hurts you. And sometimes enemies can hit you when they're hiding behind walls. That's real fair. The farther you go, the more you have to just accept the fact you're gonna take a hit. Some obstacles can be unavoidable. But while this game does have some frustrating aspects, there are some oddly friendly ones too. You can only carry three power-ups, but if you grab another life preserver after those, it gets added to your light. That's awfully kind, but you're gonna need all the help you can get when these jellyfish start sneaking up on you from out of nowhere. And when you die, you go back to the very beginning in the not-so-dark abyss. That's just fantastic. It's all a challenge to see how far you can get. But if you endure and give it everything you've got, you might eventually reach the dark abyss. Now that truly is dark. An all-encompassing darkness devoid of any semblance of light. Let's see how far I can make it. <laughs> well, that didn't last very long. The stage is also incredibly long and no one knows what the bottom of it looks like. For all we know, there could be a stage called the even darker abyss after this one, then the darkest abyss after that. Then the final stage is Dark Lucy's Soul. But while we're here, we might encounter giant evil jellyfish. I see deep sea gigantism as a thing in the Spongebob universe too. But good luck getting very far down here. You can't really get a feel for the stage's difficulty because you get sent back to the beginning whenever you die. As far as characters go, I consistently have the best luck with Sandy, but the more I play, the worse I get. I always do my best on my first attempt, then every time I try the game afterwards, I end up dying in the first two stages. Maybe it's just an unconscious disappointment and lack of enthusiasm for trying to get that far again. I'm sure there's a science behind it. Regardless, we must keep going. Even though victory seems impossible, we must try our best to reach it, no matter what it takes. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I can't win this. Fairly certain it just goes on forever anyway. Oh well, I'm sure I'm about to hit the ground soon, so I better wrap this up. So anyway, despite the game's difficulty and potential for rage in some instances, it's a lot of fun and I find myself eagerly going back to it every so often. It isn't as rage-inducing as Bodocross or similar challenging games, so you won't get too angry while giving this a try. It does take a little bit for the difficulty to truly kick in, too. Aside from that, the game nails the creepy atmosphere and really makes you feel the dread of plunging into the depths of the ocean. You really don't know what awaits you at the bottom. For all we know, it could be the Baraki. Either way, the Dark Abyss is really cool and worth trying out for yourselves. See if you can be the first known person to reach the bottom. I bet there'll just be a hole that sends you back to the very beginning. Oh look, there's a hole now. Let's see if I can- OW! Hit it too hard. Anyway. Well then, it seems we've made it to the bottom of the well. There's also someone else here, so that's an interesting fact. But I think that's about all we have to say for the Dark Abyss. Fun, hard, scary, and imperfect, yet still fascinating. So while we're down here, I think we should take the opportunity to look at another working man game, just to pass the time. We still have quite a few we haven't covered, so let's grab one at random. Hmm. Well, here's Trouble Clef. Now that's an interesting pun. Look at the title screen. So in this, Squidward is sending Spongebob nasty notes, in its own words. So how do you deal with mediocre music? You laugh at it. So for some reason, Spongebob and Squidward are standing on big interconnected jellyfish. Squidward is sending notes down their appendages, so you have to laugh at the right one to destroy them. As time goes on, they get bigger and take more laughter to take down. Oh, and hi there, Patrick. If a note reaches you, you take damage. But as time goes by, the notes get more overbearing, like this. Then when you die, this is the game over screen.
Jeez, is he ever going to stop? How long can he freak out for? But the game is fine, just a basic one without any complicated mechanics. Though I can't deny that game over freak out is really strange. That sound is enough to wake up the dead. Oh hey, where'd the skeleton go? <sighs> oh, I think we just encountered some lore. Anyway, we do have to get out of here, so let's finish with a game that has to do with climbing rather than falling. But let me warn you, no matter how hard you think the Dark Abyss is, you have yet to see the real demon. The nightmares have only just begun. This is Hooked on You. Right away, I see they didn't fancy us being able to read this text. Let's check out the instructions. Oh, very compelling. Yeah, the text is missing from the modern versions of this, but I'm sure we can figure it out, right? Right? So this is a platform jumper where you need to reach Patrick at the top of the ocean. Unfortunately, everything under the sea is out to kill you. Primarily jellyfish and deadly platforms. You can barely walk two steps without being hurt. There isn't any music, but sound clips from the show are used every so often. And it's unfortunate the instructions don't work, because you might not know what an item does until it's too late. Look, I didn't know the bubble was gonna reappear, so I tried to jump on the jellyfish. Hey, it took too long. Some spaces are really tight, and certain platforms can be really tedious to jump to. And sometimes certain situations force you to take damage from something. Some of these obstacles can be really difficult to manage. For example, there's this hook section of the first stage. The hooks fly up when you step on them, but there's also a jellyfish flying across the screen. That means you have to time your jumps super specifically. Then there's another time jumping section right after it. So if you fall, you have to do it all over again. And these treasure chests that fling you are the worst, because you never know if they're gonna fling you right into a jellyfish or a spiky platform. And this section at the end of the first stage is just on unfair. But when you reach the top, you find Patrick chilling on the surface. Then you flip a switch that somehow makes him fall down. Then your collectibles are tallied and you move on to the next stage, which is in even murkier waters than the first one. And as you can guess, it's just as brutal as the first. The developers must have been cackling to themselves while they made this. Some of these obstacles are ruthless. But the very first section of the third stage can be a real pain. And yeah, it only gets worse as the stage goes on. While I don't generally mind difficult games, I do wish this one gave you a little more room to breathe. Like I said, you can't walk two steps without getting hurt. It's hard to revel in the gameplay when you're constantly taking damage or ramming into something. Though I will admit, it gets a bit easier on your second run through when you understand it a bit more. And unlike The Dark Abyss, this is actually winnable. It's only three stages, then you give them your email address. Seems like a good trade-off to me. But yeah, it's very short, so they made it as challenging as they could get away with. Again, I wish they simmered down just a little so I could have a bit more breathing room, but there's definitely a market for these types of games. People who like to challenge themselves can get a real kick out of this. But anyway, even though I just played a game about going up, I'm still stuck in the bottom of this well. I think it's about time I try to- Whoa! Ugh! Well, I just got fished up back to the surface. Gee, thanks whoever did- Okay, I don't think I should stick around here. This well is definitely cursed. So anyway, be sure to subscribe, follow me on the accounts in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.